All Powers recently sent me this portable power station and solar panel, so today we're gonna test it out and see what it can do. And one feature that it has that I'm really excited to test out is its UPS function. Sometimes my power will go out and come back on and then my Wi-Fi router and modem has to reset and it takes a few minutes before we get internet again. And this can be really annoying, especially if you work from home and you're dependent on having internet access. So I wanna test this out and hook it up to my Wi-Fi router and modem and see if it will keep the internet on if the power goes out. But first, let's look at a few of the other features that it has. First of all, this is very lightweight and easy to carry. It only weighs about 12 pounds. And also it has a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is top of the line. And it's rated for 3,500 life cycles on the battery, which means you can go from 100% battery down to zero, charge it up again, you can do that 3,500 times and the battery will still have 80% of its original capacity. So this is a great battery. And the capacity on the battery is 299 watt hours. So you'll get about 300 watt hours of power. And it has a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is great for electronics. And it can handle up to a 1200 watt surge, which is great for a small unit like this. Now, this thing also has a phone app that you can use uh, to connect with Bluetooth. So to turn the Bluetooth on for this device, you have to hold down this uh, USB power button for three seconds. And then you can see that now the Bluetooth is enabled. And then you'll be able to download the app and connect to it that way. One thing I don't like about the app is that it seems that each time you open it up, you have to click through and reconnect to the device. Not a big deal, but I just wish it was automatic so you don't have to do this each time. And here is the solar panel. It's a 140 watt panel and it comes in this nice carrying case. Uh, it's, it's not too heavy at all, easy to carry and move around. Uh, so let's set it up. And overall, the these panels, I, I really like them. They're really lightweight, easy to carry, and setting them up is pretty easy. It doesn't take long at all. So overall, I really like the solar panel, but one, one thing I don't like about it is uh, that these legs don't lock out into position. So each time you move it, you have to make sure these legs are pulled out. So like if I wanted to reposition the panel, like these legs would kind of collapse so it might be easier with two people but not that bad once you get used to it all right so since we got our panel set up now we're gonna hook it up to the power station and I'll show you how it charges so if you come around on the back side it has this pouch here that zips up I just unzipped it just pull out the cord from the pouch this right here is the connector that's going to go into the power station. Okay, so right now before I hook it up, we're sitting at 85% charge. Just plug it right in the side. And now you can see that the, the input for the solar panels is pulling in right now about 70 watts. And it says down here at the bottom that it will be fully recharged in just... 36 minutes, which is pretty cool. Now normally I could just keep the power station under my deck awning um, over here in the shade, but if you're out in the field or something, camping or something, um, you just place the power station uh, behind the solar panel to keep it in the shade while you're charging. That way it won't get overheated. And one cool thing about the app is that not only can you turn on and off the AC and DC ports on the device you can also if you're charging it outside say with solar you don't have to constantly go out and check the status of the charge you can look right on the app and see the percentage of the battery so you can just look on your app from inside the house and know when it's fully charged so i really like that feature with the app okay so now we have it charged to 100 percent and in order to turn on these ac outlets right here we just hit this button one time 
turns the outlets on. And if you want to turn on this section right here, you just hit this other button. And for this section, when you turn it on, it actually turns on this section. It also turns on this 12 volt outlet right here. And it also turns on the top where you can wirelessly charge a cell phone and I really like that feature. And it also has this light button at the top. If you hit it one time, the light comes on. If you hit it a second time, it gets brighter. And then if you hit it a third time, it gives the SOS signal, uh, which is pretty cool. And then to turn it off, you just hit it a third time. So let's see what this thing can power. All right, so here we have a fan. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC outlets and we'll turn the fan on and see what it does. Okay, so this is on low, and you can see that it's putting out eight watts. So I'm gonna turn it on medium. And medium, it's going up to 13 watts, and then on high, So now the fan's on high and it's pulling about 20 watts. And it's saying that it could do this. It could run this fan for 10 hours on this battery, which is very good. Like if you want to take this camping, this will definitely run a fan for a long time. But what about a coffee pot? Well, let's give it a try. Turn it on. And you can see this coffee pot, it's almost pushing it to the max of 600 watts. It's pulling 590 watts. And it says that the battery's gonna last for 24 minutes. And one thing I also want to note is a lot of the reviews on an older model of this said that the, the cooling fan, which is right on the inside, they said the cooling fan was very loud. And for this particular beige model, um, they've upgraded that and they fixed that issue. And the fan is, is not loud at all. Um, you can probably hear it a little bit now, but it's, they've definitely fixed that issue. Um, so will it run a pot of coffee? Yes, you can see it's brewing the coffee. It's almost at the max of 600 watts. But by the time the coffee's done, I mean, the battery's going to be depleted and you'll have to recharge it again. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend making coffee with this thing, but you definitely could. And here we have a hair dryer, so I'm going to turn it on low. And you can see on low, and I have it on just warm, not hot yet. Um, it's pulling around 293 watts. And if I go to high, there's over 800 watts output, which is pretty amazing. So I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did uh, going over 600 watts. But the, the max on this thing is 600 watts with a 1200 watt surge. So if it needs to go to 1200 for a split second for something to start up, it can do that. But for continuous running, um, it it shouldn't go over 600 watts. So a hair dryer is definitely not gonna work with this. And this is a mini fridge. So we'll see if it can power that. So I'll go ahead and turn it on. And just heard the compressor kick on. So initially it popped up to over 500, a um, little surge. Now it's um, working at about 80 watts. So it will definitely run a small refrigerator and even at 78% right now it's saying it could run it for two hours which is pretty good. All right so now I have it plugged into the wall so it's it's charging it has the 215 watt input now but I have this on and you can see up here it says UPS so that's the UPS function for uninterruptible power supply and what I have plugged into it you can see this strip here has these two plugs and that is my Wi-Fi router and modem so you can see all the lights are green so what we're gonna do 
is I'm going to unplug this right here to simulate a power outage so this will no longer be getting power and then we'll see if the UPS worked and we'll know if all the, these lights are still green. And it's supposed to switch over in the event of a power outage, it's supposed to switch over within 10 milliseconds uh, to work off of the battery. So we'll see if that works. So I'm just gonna unplug and you can see that all the lights are still on on the modem and router and there's nothing going in because it's not plugged in. That worked just like it was supposed to. So now if I'm in a meeting at work online and the power goes out for a minute and it comes back on, I don't have to worry about losing internet. So this is great. So overall, this is a great unit to have for being prepared for a power outage or to take on a camping trip. This would definitely keep your phones, tablets, laptops charged. And I, I especially love the UPS feature that it has if you have something that you need to keep running if the power goes out. Um, that's a great feature. I really like that. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I'll leave links down in the description below if you want to check it out. And speaking of being prepared for power outages, did you know that FEMA has a list of 30 items that they recommend you keep stocked in your home? To learn more, click on this next video and I'll see you there.